American television sitcom Eve aired for three seasons on UPN from September 15, 2003 to May 11, 2006. The series starring Philly rapper Eve was created by Meg Deloach and produced by the Greenblatt Janelari Studio and Mega Diva Inc. in association with Warner Brothers Television. Robert Greenblatt and David Genilari also served as executive producers. Even though the show was set in Miami, Florida, filming took place in Hollywood, California. Stock exterior shots of Miami were used for the opening credits and transitions between scenes. Rapper Missy Elliott wrote and performed the theme song called The Opposite Sex. It was produced by R&B hip hop production team Soul Diggers. She's the kind of chick who likes to look fly and pick up any guy with a slick rap line. Give him the eye, get the keys to the ride, and live the single life, little teasing on the side. She's the type of chick who likes to wear fly clothes. It rocks the lead toes, but we'll get get told. If anybody knows, I'ma tell you who knows who spend the cash flow. Let the story be told. EVE, how you do that? EVE, how you do that? EVE, how you do that? UPN executives approached Eve about developing a television project following her performance of her single, Gangsta Lovin', at the network's Monday night premiere party, a kickoff celebration for several of the channel's season premieres. She had previously garnered positive reviews for her supporting roles in the 2002 dramedy film Barbershop and 2002 action film Triple X. The network designed the series as a vehicle for Eve following the positive response to fellow musical artist Brandy in another sitcom on the network, Moesha. In the November 2003 issue of Jet Magazine, Eve said, I believe that once they saw me in the movie and saw that I was able to act, they wanted to make something happen. UPN talked to me before I was in a movie. After they saw me in the movie, they really wanted to make it happen. Fun fact, to further distinguish herself as an actor, Eve decided against performing the show's theme song. The show revolves around Miami fashion designer and owner of her own boutique named Diva Style, Shelly Williams, played by Eve. Yes, even though the show is named Eve, her character goes by a different name. She's also on the search for the right guy. Her best friends, Janie, played by Natalie Desell reed and Rita, played by Ali Landry, offer her friendly yet conflicting advice about men. JT, played by Jason George, Nick, played by Brian Hooks, and Donovan, played by Sean McGuire, speak on behalf of the guys. Fun fact, Bumper Robinson was originally slated to portray JT, but was replaced by Jason for undisclosed reasons. The role of Donovan was also recast, with original actor Eddie McClintock removed in favor of Sean. Publicized as the Untitled Eve Project in an early press release, the series had the working title, The Opposite Sex, before it was changed to reflect Eve's status as the star. She actually wasn't supportive of the name change in the beginning, telling Jet, I fell in love with the name, but it was changed because it was more of a corporate decision. They explained to me that there were a lot of new shows coming on this season, and they just wanted people to know exactly what show I was on. They did not want fans to guess and flip through channels. That made sense. The sitcom, after it was retitled Eve, naturally shifted its focus a little, but at its heart, the show remained the story of six friends, three female, three male, trying to make sense of their love lives and better understand the opposite sex. It was one of four new comedies developed by UPN for the 2003-2004 television season as part of a new comedy block, including All of Us, Rock Me Baby, and The Mullets. A writer from Today described UPN's enlistment of Eve into a comedy as an example of the network's attempt to form its own identity through targeting a younger, multi-ethnic audience. After production got underway, Eve admitted that doing comedy was a challenge. She even had two acting coaches, one in New York and one in Los Angeles. One of them was veteran actress and acting coach Chip Fields, the mother of actresses Kim and Alexis Fields. The feedback the show received was quite mixed. The New York Times was positive, saying, The humor is body and not very different from the jokes on the UPN comedy Girlfriends, but the cast is well chosen, and Eve, as a leading lady, has an appealing tough edge that matches the paw print tattoos on her chest. The Seattle Post Intelligencer initially talked down on the show's scenery, costumes, and Eve's, quote, embarrassing lack of dramatic chops, end quote. However, after a revised pilot, many improvements were noticed and appreciated. Other noteworthy aspects of Eve's preseason makeover, glossier sets and threads, a sexier and more talented male lead, the smart acquisition of off-center's McGuire, a Brit whose crisp delivery saves the clumsiest lines. 
all conspire to make this Eliza Doolittle of UPN comedies sassy enough to fit in with the rest of Monday night's steadily improving urban blog. On the flip side, the San Francisco Gate didn't hold anything back reporting. Eve might well be one of the most poorly thought out shows in years, and is no mites about it, easily one of the worst written and performed pieces of television in some time, and that's saying something. Eve, who can act, is paired here with former model Ali Landry, who really can act, and the combination is made even worse, woefully, by the addition of what would be the worst writing on television if not for stablemate Rock Me Baby. And the LA Times said, and the big question, of course, is does Eve deserve to have a show built around her? Judging by the premiere, no. Although she appeared in last year's surprise hit film Barbershop, she doesn't have the acting ability or high voltage charisma that vaulted Will Smith from rapper to television star. Eve took it all on the chin, telling Jet, Everybody's a critic, but if you love what you do, you can't care what those people say. Of course, they would say bad things because they never saw me in that light. I don't really care. During the development of the second season, Eve viewed the set as her home and felt the process was easier, having grown closer to the cast and crew. She admitted in an interview with Billboard in 2004 that the first season was rough. The first year was hell. It was torture. It was like I was being punished. I felt like I was in detention. I just wanted to leave because there was so much to learn. It's just a different world. It's hard to play funny. There are certain beats you have to learn. Thankfully, things got easier in the second season. It feels like, wow, this is home. I love my cast, I love my crew. It's exciting, I'm having fun. In spite of mixed reception from critics, the show and Eve's performance received several award nominations, including a 2004 Teen Choice Award nomination for Choice TV Actress Comedy, a 2005 Image Award nomination for Outstanding Actress in a Comedy Series, and a 2005 BET Awards Comedy Award nomination for Outstanding Lead Actress in a Comedy Series. Despite having the highest ratings among African American women, though, Eve's ratings did not measure up to executives' hopes. The last episode of the third and final season ends in a cliffhanger, with Jamie, Rita, and Donovan arrested for illegally selling Botox at Shelley's Boutique, which would lead one to believe that there was a possibility of coming back for a fourth season in the fall. Alas, the show, as well as a majority of UPN's programs, was officially canceled when the network merged with the WB television network to form the CW in 2006. Eve believes, though, that her actions off the set may also be partially to blame for things ending when they did. She came clean about it all in her 2020 TV One Uncensored episode. Having my own sitcom was everything. It was pressure. It was fun. It was stressful. It was amazing. I was the youngest at the time um, of the cast and a lot of them were just getting married or just buying their first house or like just having babies. I was still going to the club trying to get to set at like 9 a.m. Like <laughs> trying to get to a table read which was don't do that ever. Um, it took me a minute to figure out that rhythm because I had always been on tour all my life pretty much up until that point. Um, I think for me to offset some of that, I was still trying to hang out at night, which was not good. Well, let's put it this, I'll say a few things, but when the show ended, it was, it was definitely heartbreaking because at that time we had done three seasons and we were family at this point. Like, I do believe a lot of it had to do with the fact that I was trying to kind of straddle both sides of my life, like still trying to hold on to kind of hanging out. Um, and I was late a lot. That's not cool. You know, I do think a lot of it had to do with my actions at that time. And I do think about it sometimes. When I look back on it, I'm like, wow, I don't, I don't believe in regrets, but that is, a, that is one time in my life where I feel like I wish I would have taken it a little more seriously than I did. The show's cancellation was not well received by fans nor television critics. Many believe the move was strategic on the CW's part to void the network of any content featuring a predominantly black cast. Sadly, Natalie DeSell Reed passed away on December 7, 2020, after a private battle with colon cancer. She was 53 years old. 
While the series has not been made available on Blu-ray or DVD, it was released on the iTunes Store and Amazon Prime Video.